you know, you're, it, when you're in here, that's, that's when your nose itches. You get your gloves on, you get in the parts washer, and then inevitably, inevitably your nose itches. Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Welcome back to Motorworks TV. And, uh, I'll... Welcome back to Motorworks. Uh, you know, if you fool around with this stuff, mechanics in general, uh, sooner or later you come to understand that there's really a fair amount of drudgery that goes along with it. The hours that you spend at the parts washer, uh, in the blast cabinet, cleaning stuff, uh, just everything that goes along with, with all of the fun stuff that you do. So today we're going to do a little tech talk tool thing and we're going to show you one of the things that we use here that helps minimize the amount of time that you spend in the parts washer and you end up being able to spend a great deal a great deal more time in here just with the major parts clutch covers transmission covers fork components whatever the case may be and all of the little things that would normally add up to a lot of time in here a very affordable way and a very efficient way to automate that process. So, should be kind of fun. You ready? Let's get to it. This is called a tumbler. And now, they're used for a whole bunch of different uh, purposes in uh, jewelry uh, and in uh, firearms, ammunition reloading, and a bunch of other different uh, hobbies and industries and that kind of thing. You can fill these bowls with a couple of different things in order to get a particular job done. In this case, this bowl is full of gravel and we pour a solvent in here that you would normally uh, mix with water, like simple green, that kind of thing. But you put it in full strength and don't fill it up too far because then it overflows like a washing machine that you put three cups of detergent in. So during disassembly, let's say you're doing a clutch or you're taking apart a rear suspension bushings and bearings and that kind of thing and it's a very grungy, mungy thing or it's a bike that didn't get clean and it got a lot of mileage on it or for whatever reason, you're dealing with hardware that is very grungy and, and various components too. Not just nuts and bolts, uh, center stand springs, brake caliper pistons, uh, all kinds of stuff goes in here. And when you plug this in and turn it on, it's out of balance. There's an electric motor in there, it spins, it's out of balance, so it vibrates. And those parts circulate in there with that gravel and do all of your parts washer work for you. What you're going to want to do when, uh, as, a, as a, an additional tip is you're going to be putting a bit more weight into this machine than it, than it may or may not have been designed to deal with between the weight of the parts and the weight of the gravel. So a lesson we learned on, on the hard way is you want to measure and place a washer stack on this arbor that matches the distance from the bottom of the bowl, these rubber pads here, the bottom of the bowl, to the underside of this center cone. So that when you put the fender washer and washer stack and the wing nut down on here and tighten this up all the way, you can tighten it up a little bit more without deforming the bowl. So the, the bowl still rests on the rubber pads that impart the shake, but you've created that support on its underside so that you can squeeze down more when you bolt that in place. Uh, one other thing while we're at it, again, a lesson we learned the hard way. When you put the lid on and you do a fender washer and a washer stack, you want to take this wing nut and you want to drill a hole in it and a little tiny hole in the top of this arbor and then clean those threads up so it doesn't give you problems. And then you want to safety wire that after you get it snug down so that the vibration does not loosen the wing nut up holding the lid on and the lid starts dancing around 
And then the next thing you know, you've just got a huge, soapy, greasy, grimy, gopher guts kind of mess. So there's a little tip. Make sure you secure that wing nut with some safety wire uh, so that it can't uh, un uh, come undone. So you can put a lot of different parts in here. They're a wash, as we see here, um, in, in all of that water and all that gravel. So you can fish them out with a simple magnet wand, which is something you have in your toolbox, al toolbox already. So all those little parts, brake nipples, washers, nuts, small screws, that kind of thing, you can fish those out of there pretty efficiently with that guy. And then what you end up when you're with when you are done is if it's a maintenance task or it's a repair task, then your hardware is ready to go back on the bike, go back together in a way that makes your shop life and your work session more enjoyable because all of your parts and all of your hardware are clean and dry and ready for reassembly. If you're doing a restoration, uh, of some significance or, or complete, the other benefit is, is that after that hardware has come out of the tumbler, out of this bowl, it is ready to leave and go out for plating. If you don't do your own zinc plating, there are kits that you can get so that you can do your own zinc plating uh, and that's a, that's a pretty cool thing to do, to know that you pre-plated your hardware yourself. We find it to be kind of cost prohibitive here, and we took the time and trial to find a plater uh, that, that, we, that we like very much. And they do barrel plating, and you can do some research on that. We have sent groups of hardware for different motorcycles to them at the same time with the request that they would keep them seg segregated and come back as the red batch, the blue batch, the green batch, what have you. And, and what comes back from them is all of that OEM hardware for that bike is been uh, acid dipped and replated to an equal or in many instances a higher specification than what the bike may have had originally when it left the factory because all road bikes are built to a price point and the manufacturer is going to find places to save money where they can. And over the years, different manufacturers have been a little bit weak on the quality of the plating and the quality of the hardware that's going into the bike that they may have offered you. So it's a, it's a fast and, and efficient way to get from this to this to something that is adequate to something beautiful. If you're freshly powder coated frame, there's going to be a new set of wheels built, the uh, uh, new paint on the bodywork, new chrome plating on exhaust or headlights or fenders or whatever. It doesn't take long for the original hardware to start making that project look bad. It looks hurried or it looks incomplete. And this is not an expensive proposition. Sending an entire motorcycles worth of hardware out to get plated, even if you include the shipping, you can usually get that entire battery of hardware as we see here done for around 75 to $100, $125. And the experience that it creates for you during the reassembly process coming from that freshly painted or powder coated frame and building the chassis of that bike back up, building that engine back out to its glory is enhanced and made more enjoyable by the, the, the effort and the work that you put into making sure that every nut and bolt got the same care that building that beautiful set of wheels or that beautiful paint job or that beautifully dialed in engine does. So that's, that's your tech talk for today. All right, you all be safe out there. If you enjoyed what you saw today, please come back and see us again. 
hit that subscribe button, maybe even pop that bell if you want to get an alert when we posted something new. And we look forward to seeing you all next time, all right? Uh, take care, ride safe, ride smart. Cheers. <laughs>